Hi, I'm Mark Logan and welcome to the Laster Light School of Photography. Today we're going to be looking at umbrellas and the basic kind of lighting patterns, uh, what the umbrellas are good for, what they're actually not really designed to do and things really, but really to actually get back to basics as far as the lighting position is concerned, the kind of set, the setting up and why I'm going to use different umbrellas for different effects. So it's really about portraiture today, but we're looking at the power and the position of the light. Cool, that's great. Thanks, Tia. Step out for a minute, darling. To begin with, um, brollies can be a great tool, but they can also be the worst enemy, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you're passionate about the direction of light and everything. that I try and spend a lot of my time making sure that the, sub the subject is always going to look at their best. And even before we get into about the brolly, what we've got to look at here is the positioning of the lighting. Um, and as a rule of thumb, this is where a lot of photographers start. Because they get a kit of lighting, like we have here, we've got lu uh, luminates, and they, they come with umbrellas actually in the kit, even though we're using slightly bigger ones here than they actually came with this, with this kit. Um, photographers think they've got to actually put them on both sides, um, and that is really not what you want to do, because this simulates uh, kind of two suns and we cross the light. It doesn't matter if we're going to change the power on these two to actually even them out or give one more power than the other. We're still going to get that double catch light. We're still going to get a crossing of the shadows. And so the portrait just will never look quite right. And it's, for many photographers, it's a frustrating point because they look at the likes of fashion magazines and portrait books and they just look at their own images and they compare against it and there's just something missing. And the thing that is missing is these two lights is they're in the wrong position. Where we never want to achieve is this crossing. The light should pro be basically on the same side. And we usually use this second light. This is acting as my main light here for a minute, okay? This is set to F8. This is what my working exposure, my aperture is. Um, this light, I've set a little bit less in power. So it's uh, one and a half stops less to give me a three to one ratio in fill. But I don't get com uh, complicated for a minute. Because the first thing what's wrong with this is its physical position, because it's on the opposite side. Now, you might think that's right and balanced, but I promise you it's going to ruin your photograph. Okay, so the first things first, we need to get this light e either onto the same side as this or behind camera position. We never want this light, this second light, to cross over to the opposite side. So it doesn't matter which one of these we decide decided was going to be our main light, either the one on here or the one here. Okay, that's really down to you. But whichever one is left, it needs to go behind the, cam the camera position to get a better style of photograph straight away, and it will change the way that you actually work. And I'll prove that for a minute. I'm just going to switch off one of these, uh, which is the fill, the fill light, and I'm now going to just shoot with this one uh, light alone. And watch how a three-dimensional kind of shadow appears on the right-hand side. And that is caused because we've created highlight on one side of the face and we've created shadow on the opposite side. So T, if you come in for me, darling, let me just do a quick one. It's gorgeous there. And for me again. Fake it. It's great. Just then turn the head this way a little bit. That's good. Just there. Brilliant. And one more for me. Keep it. It's gorgeous. Thank you, T. So, instantly you can see now We've got a direction of light. We've got a highlight running down the one side of the face, and we've created shadow on the opposite side. And the reason we've done that is to obviously start the three-dimensional process. If we light from both sides, we're flat lighting, and we don't give it a real specular on the fa face or on the skin, which is our kind of reflective sur surface in the image. And that is the point where it's going to give us our three-dimensional look, was that hi the highlight we cause is what gives us the three-dimensional feel to the image itself. So because we've created shadow on this side, now we want to use this other light to lift that shadow information. But we have to move it in position first. Happier. And again for me, turn the head this way a touch more. That's beautiful. And again for me, close, close up again. It's beautiful just there. Excellent. Thank you, T. Can you see the difference in that image? We've just brought the shadow side of the face alive. And of course, the fuller the length of the body, 
that fill, fill light needs to make sure it's going to wash across this whole kind of plane, wherever we decide. And you can see, I've got a little bit of tape on the floor floor here. And this is my kind of perfect spot for tea to actually be in position. In fact, it would be my kind of gauge for a young child. That's where I want them to sit or to stand to make sure they're in this kind of wash of light the whole time. So I've got my exposure set of F8 based on the exposure I've taken with my, me my meter. And then the fill light in the background is going to be one and a half stops less, so it's going to give us f four and a half. And we measure that with this light switched off, so we can get a true reading of them there. And by doing that, we've created a three-dimensional image because we have highlight running through the shadow, but now we have shadow with detail instead of a block black. So what we've got here is just three of the sizes that are available. Uh, we've got an 80 centimeter actually on the end, which is the little one. That's probably the most common size that you'll find with kits when they actually come within um, the flash head kits that you buy kind of thing with it. Then you've got a 100 centimeter one, which is my personal favorite size for the majority of the work, and we'll get to why now in a minute. And we have the one and a half meter size. And if you think that's the mother of all umbrellas, well, they do bigger ones as well. Um, but we couldn't get that bigger one actually in my studio, so uh, we got the one and a half. So what are they based for? So now we've looked at the spread, we're going to look at the different finishes of each of the umbrellas and actually how they will give a different kind of style of specularity or sharp sharpness or colour onto the subject depending on the kind of style of the umbrella that we're going to use. But first, first of all, let's just actually discuss the difference between a bounce umbrella and a shoot-through umbrella. So what we're seeing here is physically the same umbrella except that this is designed to be able to be used as a shoot-through umbrella. In other words, it points towards the subject. And all we've done is remove the outer skin or the outer reflectancy surface to the umbrella itself. Whereas the one on the left is a bounce umbrella now, because what happens is the flash is going to bounce into the umbrella before it's allowed to return. And that's what we've seen up to now being used. So let's just for a minute, let's see both of these and the effect that they actually play. Um, in the, por the portrait. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to get uh, Tia right on the background just to exa exaggerate the effect so you can see exactly what we're doing. Just there. Excellent. So, we've got the bounce light. Now, that's creating more shadow in fact because it's controlling the spread and spillage of the light. So it's more of a concentrated kind of effect on the image. And that's why it's the more efficient of the brollies, especially when we're trying to light across a bigger group. Compared to the shoot through, it's less efficient because it's allowing the light to spill around. Because it's not only coming through here, but it's all coming out through the sides and everything else. And that is why when we look at the stills, we can see when Tia was against the background here, we had a soft shadow with our shoot through umbrella compared to a stronger shadow when we use the bounce back. So think about the kind of style of the image that you're trying to create, then choose your lighting equipment to suit it because these two basics will change the look of your, por your portrait no matter what. So let's kick off the different surfaces with the white. Um, to accurately control the look on your screen as far as my stills are concerned, I'm going to shoot first of all, can I borrow that just a second T, thank you, um, I'm going to shoot a grey card. Uh, this is our last light kind of little pop-up that we carry around in our bag the whole, the whole time. It's a way for us to accurately plot colour uh, in, po in post-production as well as do custom balances on camera of course. But just today I'm going to select all those images, click onto this one balance first and then all the images are the same. The, you'll see the accurate colour that is coming off those uh, um, different umbrellas. So T's just going to come, come by here, we'll do a quick shot and then what we're going to make our way through is the different surfaces to see the change of the colour and the quality of the light as far as the softness or the, sharp, the sharpness on each of the uh, umbrellas we're going to use today. T, just borrow that for me. Come in, grab a few. Shoot outwards a minute. Check it away for me, T. Okay, let's go into a pose that we're going to keep. Okay, let's do that. Keep it for me. Excellent. And again, once more. So let's go to the next one, please, Paul. Next one. Again. Excellent. Next. Again. Cool. Thank you. 
Look how warm it looks compared to the white, how it adds that dramatic colour in as much as anything else. Wow, what a difference in those shots. Um, so we talked about the surfaces really, but there are also different ways to actually buy the, com the combinations, and it's buying wise with umbrellas. Um, because they can be a very powerful tool, but if you're buying the wrong ones, you're, you're never going to really get the maximum out of them, and that's really what I try and achieve with all the kit that I buy. Um, so you're going to have several kind of styles. Let me bring this, this one in for a minute as well. Um, on the left here, this one, the gold one, this is in fact two umbrellas in one, if you think about it, because it's a reversible. And what it means is we've got the gold on the one side, and as you might be able to see there, if I tilt that down, you've got a silver on the opposite. The other one we've got is the all-in-one. Um, this is still my favourite umbrella, uh, no matter what. Um, why? Because it allows me to have basically a diff a, the different style of look as far as the specularity. I can use it as a bounce, as it's in here. I can use it as a bounce, uh, which is this called, I think, bounce white, which means there's the, sil the silver reflector behind, and with the diffusion material in place, uh, it obviously goes through and then bounces back through. So you lose a little bit of light, but not a huge amount anyway. Um, but I love this because obviously either I can have it as uh, this bounce white, I can take off this diffusion layer and have it as a bounce silver, or I can use it as a shoot, shoot through umbrella. And I'm just going to now unplug it and I've now got to switch on, sorry I should swap it, to the silver. So that's our silver umbrella. Uh, of course now I'm going to change it back again because I want to show you almost a fourth use of it. So we've talked about the bounce with the white, which was the diffusion mater material before the silver and back again. Then we talked about the shoot through, as well as the qualities of actually still having like a white bounce but the diffusion all round. Um, and then of course we've got the, sil the silver effect, but I'm going to put the diffusion material back on, so I'm going to put the construction of the umbrella back together again, and we're going to start, start from scratch, and I'll show you another way to actually get some great shots from this umbrella. So we're back to the basic all-in-one umbrella. And the reason I've put it back, uh, back on again is uh, there's another way, as I said, I, I use it. And that's by removing just half of the umbrella or a part of the umbrella. And what this allows me to do is have a sharp look to the image or controlling the lighting as well. And this is great, for instance, if I want to have a little bit of control on the bottom part of the body. So perhaps I want to vignette the base more. So what I'll do here is just actually, let me just tilt, tilt that down a little bit. I'm going to do some shots with this with Tia in a minute. But now you can see I'm lit here, but actually I'm being vignetted, so it's being uh, removed. The light is being subtracted away from the part of the body. So we have a positive here as far as the way the light is coming through, but then it's being removed actually along the base. And this is another way to use a body. Of course, it doesn't have to just work like that. I can turn it to the side. And as long as you lock the brolly in place, it pretty much stays, stays there. I can use it to half light. So in, perhaps I have a wall on a side and I don't want to actually light that, uh, that up. That's another use, uh, use for that again. Another way is if we don't want to apply a lot of light to spill around the room. Stay up there. <clears throat> then we can actually just use, use that to actually throw a little bit of light down to here. And if you're going to use this, tech, this technique, a couple of little uh, bulldog clips are a good idea to actually just keep, uh, to keep in the bag with it just to actually pin it on so it's actually not going to come off kind of thing with it, especially when it's pointing down, because its natural habitat is falling down. Okay, so that's the basics of the umbrellas. So there's one more umbrella to actually look at. Can I just borrow that, Paul? And this is called the Jewel. Um, one of the little things with all the umbrellas, if you look, uh, you've got the spokes, and that's going to cause, at times, a little bit of kind of mar marking in the eye and shows that specularity off the metal. But in this jewel, you can see that they're hidden because the spokes are actually encased in the surface of the material itself. So it's another way to actually help, help us remove little kind of reflections in, in the eyes kind of thing with it. So I'm going to get on with shooting some shots of Tia using the all-in-one umbrella in a, di a different variety of styles. I hope you've enjoyed this film. I'm Mark Level for The Last Light School of Photography. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.